I'm still gonna have a good week. Long as the Eagles lose, I'm still gonna have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Cause we still in it by one game. God damn it! Jason fucking Garrett, seriously? Is that what y'all been through for ten years? Yeah. Is that what y'all? Good morning, good friends. Mark Holmes here, and well, Joe Boo is actually down at the Red Brick House. But we do have Joe Bear here holding down the fort. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up this morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are ready for Taco Tuesday today. It's a great day. Today is my wife Tracy's birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, baby. I love you. And as soon as I finish, I'm going to go cook a nice breakfast for her to start her birthday off on the good foot. And this is Tuesday. The teams are off. The Eagles licking their wounds. Dallas Cowboys having a few extra days of rest, getting ready for the Philadelphia Eagles. A couple of things that I find actually kind of funny right now, okay? All I ask is just keep it the same. Keep it balanced throughout the way you look at things. You know, we hear now so many bad calls. Pat Mahomes was robbed. They should have been pass interference, Right? Right? We heard that? Yeah. You know, we hear about the Eagles, you know, short week, having to play, not getting the calls, injured players, excuses. And when I said, when the Cowboys lost to the Arizona Cardinals, where every week, and I want you to understand this, because see, we never get this, and this is part of the reason why some of Cowboy fans you know, get pissed off at Dak Prescott and the coaches and everything else, because they don't look and understand that the things that happen to us happen to other teams, you just don't hear about it. Because week one and two, Tyler Smith didn't play. Tyler Smith right now is possibly the best left guard in football. Terrence Steele, had come back from an ACL injury and wasn't quite there. Tyra Smith played the first game, but then missed the next couple. When we played the Arizona Cardinals, we lost Diggs that week. We also had Zach Martin, Biotish, and Tyron Smith not play in that game. We had two players getting their first start that were undrafted rookie free agents starting on our offensive line. We had all of those things happen early in the season. And see, here's where it's comical to me. Early in the season, people talked about the Buffalo Bills could be the best team in football, even though they did lose to the Jets opening week without Aaron Rodgers. Remember that? We looked at the Green Bay Packers we looked at the Minnesota Vikings as roadkill. Currently, as we sit right now, those two are two playoff teams. The Buffalo Bills, not so much. The fact that the Rams actually have a chance is crazy. And even just from yesterday morning to last night, where the Jacksonville Jaguars had a chance to be the number one seed in the NFL. This is how fast shit happens. Trevor Lawrence gets hurt. Christian Kirk ends up having a groin pull. We don't know how bad Trevor Lawrence is, but there's a scenario where they may not even make the playoffs. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Yeah. Things 
change quickly. When San Francisco kicked our teeth in, they kicked our teeth in. You do realize that they lost in the next three games. There is no wire-to-wire wire team. I had an extra wire there. I guess it's a 220. There's no wire-to-wire team. It's really about how you are right now. That's a fact. And you look at this right now, yeah, the Eagles look like ass-ass. In fact, th- this was Nick Sirianni after the uh, game. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. They sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The wow. players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Okay. That, that sums it up pretty much how the Eagles play. But there's no guarantee that that's how they're going to play next week. But, you know, th- this is actually funny to me because how quickly things change in the NFL. This was last week after the Bills lost to the Eagles in overtime. Murderers row one, two, three. <laughs> For real. Incredible. All right, let's just talk about what the Eagles did well here down the stretch. We'll have plenty of time to talk about another up and down day for Josh Allen, but what did you see out of the birds? Again, proving right now they are football's best team. Well, I would just say this with Philadelphia. One, they were able to come up with a stop. Now, you know, part of that was Josh Allen missing uh, a throw, but I, I thought that Jalen Hurts, who really was not able to get much going in the passing game early on, um, in these big moments, just finds a way to play his best football. I want you to look at something right here. Jalen Hurts' fifth straight win when trailing by double digits. Five weeks in a row. Five weeks in a row. The Eagles, the Eagles were down by double digits. Is that the mark of a dominating team? It shows a resilient team that finds ways to win, but you can't continue to be going down. That's what I think is incredible about him. And then in the conditions, because we obviously saw the run for a score, you know, to win it, but there's a scramble earlier in that drive. We saw the, uh, the throw to Smith uh, to convert for the first down. And so I think that there is a poise that Jalen Hurts has mm-hmm. uh, that he's just able to, kind of slow some of these big moments down and play his best football. How much trouble are the Bills in? Okay, we can forget about the Bills. Now, before I get on to what I really want to get on to, I want to deal with the Zach Ertz. You know, we have to stop this thing of thinking that every player out there is the savior for us to get a Super Bowl. Okay? Now, you go, I'm, I'm going to sound salty here, you know, about Shaq Leonard. Um, not getting signed by the Cowboys. I know I'm going to sound salty, and that's okay. I, I, it's okay. It's my channel. If I want to be a salty ass, I'll be a salty old ass. Uh, okay. I've lived on this planet for 58 years. I've earned the right to be salty when I want to be salty. Would I have liked to have gotten Shaq Leonard? Yes. Do we know really how good he's going to be? We don't know. And here's where it was interesting because somebody asked me last night, Do you think the Cowboys will have a padded practice this week? And I said, no, because the way the NFL rules are, you get 11, unless they they changed it, but you get 14 padded practices for training camp, and I think 11 during the season, and you have to have those 11 done by week 11. It's not like when Jimmy Johnson was the coach of the Cowboys and they had a padded practice the week of the Super Bowl. It's a totally different game. So when you bring in somebody like Shaq Leonard, the only time he's going to be going full speed is in a game conditions. There was word that they brought him off the field, and I don't know if this is right or not, so don't quote me on this, but I heard this. They were saying that he had to come off the field in passing downs because he wasn't able to really cover well because of the injuries anymore. 
And the Colts ended up saying it's time to go ahead and cut, you know, cut bait now. He's got the big contract. We got to eat some of that now, but better to eat it now than later. We've got the similar situation with um, Michael Gallup, where we're paying him. 13 million dollars next year and 15 the next year and there's a lot of dead money because we restructured it and so on so do you bite the bullet or do you try and restruct you know we've got our own problems with players that 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 are going to be an issue and so that's where the Colts decided during a possibility of a playoff run and this is where the Jaguars losing last night really opens the door for the Colts they let him go To equate this, this is like us letting go, you know, like Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence has had a few surgeries. He's been a key cog for us for years, and we're saying we're going to cut him while we're trying to make a playoff run. You don't do that unless you look at this and say he's not helping me anymore. I don't know. For Eagle fans, uh, you know, uh, Lord Brunson even kind of said, and I think he said this when he thought the Cowboys were going to get him. He was like, you think that a guy who's been sitting on the streets for the last two weeks is going to be the game changer for you? I don't think that that necessarily will. It'll be a help, but I don't think it's going to be a game changer. And herein lies Zach Ertz. Okay, Zach Ertz made it a point that he does not want to play for the Cowboys. Some Cowboy fans, let's go get Zach Ertz. Why? The dude's 33 years old. He was great when they won the Super Bowl in 2017. And in your mind, that's what you're thinking about this guy as a player. Now, I know he's been in Arizona where they've had problems with quarterback and things like that. But you still play well if you're a player. And I don't see a 33-year-old tight end coming here because last year, 406 yards, 8.6 yards per reception, 55% success rate. This year, we're talking about 187 yards, 6.9 yards per reception. Bro, and a 41% success rate. Bro, the Cowboys weren't into you to begin with. Bro, we don't want you. We don't want you. Eagles, have at it. Have at it. Bring him back, okay? And I'm not going to say that that he isn't a capable um, tight end anymore, but that's not what we need. I mean, we can look and say, we, we can talk Schoonmaker, okay? Schoonmaker, you bring in Zach Ertz, you're going to take out Schoonmaker, who's becoming a really good blocker. Schoonmaker is averaging... yards of reception versus 6.1. Two and a half yards more. Why would we need Zach Ertz? In people's minds, he's a name player, and that's why they would want him. So we heard how they were talking about last week after the Eagles. After the Eagles won. They're the best team in football, even though they've had to come from double digit behind five weeks in a row to win. This week, it sounds a lot different, a hell of a lot different. So this morning, I want to listen to uh, Get Up, uh, Good Morning Football, because they kind of say a few things that I've been kind of talking about. The Eagles were 10-1 and going into this game, but they were the worst 10-1 and team that we've ever seen. One year deal, and we'll see how quickly they can integrate him into their defense. So Leonard, of course, a three-time All-Pro with the Colts, dealt with a lot of injuries over the past few years. He's still only 28 years old, but has not looked like that same player, which led Mm -hmm. to the Colts releasing him last week. Leonard also visited the Cowboys after his release, but the favorite was always going to be Philadelphia. And what do you know? Those two teams meet in one of the huge games of Week 14 this weekend Mm -hmm. in Dallas. Jamie? The Eagles just have a ruthless stretch. It feels like everywhere. Like, wow, look at that matchup. It involves the Eagles somehow. Tom Pelissero, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, boots on the ground for Good Morning Football tells us that the Eagles fans like are stressing a little bit about what happens to them against the 49ers on Sunday. If that stress continues, remains to be seen. What do we make of the 10-2 and two Philadelphia Eagles right now as they prepare for, as Tom just said, another massive matchup, Kyle? October 4th of this year, 
the Philadelphia Eagles. It was the middle of the week. They were 4-0. and They had just beaten Washington. Mm -hmm. And I had a Verizon service oh, call yes. to my home. Yes. I needed my cable fix, and Mike. I even pulled up the text. Mike, Mike. from Verizon. You got it. And we had this conversation, and he says, oh, I, I know your show. Thank you. I said, who is your team? And he goes, Eagles. <laughs> and I go, Mike, what in the hell does that look? You're, you were just in the Super Bowl. You're 4-0. and And he said the quote we have talked about all year. He said, a storm is coming. Mm. So they're 4-0. and They get to 9-1, and 10-1. and <laughs> It feels like Mike should probably call into our listener line right now because it feels like the storm is here. All of these fears mm. that they had about our defense isn't as good as we think. The mm -hmm. linebackers aren't good. We can't tackle. They gave up 42 points to San Francisco. They gave up 34 to Buffalo. They've given up 60 combined two trips to Washington. I don't think it's a coincidence that 20 seconds after the game, Howie Roseman is on the phone getting Shaq Leonard in here, a guy who's played really good linebacker in this league. Uh, and here's the problem. What they need really badly is they need like a, a warm-up week. They need a sparring partner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't think Dallas could put 40 on you too? They can. They can. Now, uh, you that the has show, I think you're playing three different. of the last four they're times. Different. The concern for Philadelphia isn't that the storm is passing through, is that it's settled and that they are flawed. And all these phone callers, all the radio shows who are saying that Jalen Hurts doesn't look the same and the defense isn't as good as we think, we just they win every week and we ignore it. They didn't just lose. They lost terribly. They lost at home, and they lost to a team they're going to have to beat this year. Is the storm passing through, or is it here? Mm. i got to get Mike from Verizon on the phone. He's got to call. Mike, call the show right now. We need to hear from you. You know, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in a lot of ways and with Mike as well because they had been win they, were, they were trailing at the half for four straight games, but they were winning those games, and right. that was a story. And I would come on here on Good Morning Football the morning after. I'd be like, they're the most resilient team. They find a way to They didn't this time. So... You're, you're, you're struggling through this, this feeling in your brain where it's like, okay, are we the team that, that is able to always conquer and do it? Or are we the team that, for some reason, kept on losing these first halves and having to save ourselves in the second half against teams that we probably should beat anyway? I will give them the benefit of the doubt on this. That defense played 92 defensive snaps yep. against the Buffalo Bills. They were all banged up. The 49ers had 10 days of rest. And in a lot of ways, that Niners team came into this game with 10 months mm. of just letting that fester that they got. This might have been the perfect storm. You go to Dallas and you lose, yeah. well, and all cards are on the table, and I don't know what to tell you. You might not be the number one team, might not be the number two team in the NFC. Have you listened to the, uh, the, the Trent Williams Christmas album? He does with Bosa. It's awesome. Well, <laughs> it's great. Have you heard Christian McCaffrey's podcast? It's unbelievable. Go he gets on. together with his dad, Ed, and they just talk, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Listen. The Christmas album, it's amazing, it's for charity, all that stuff. Isn't this sobering for Philly? They've been darlings. Mm. I'm, I'm sitting on my, in the couch next to my wife last night who does not watch any football. She's scrolling Instagram, and I hear this walking in a winter wonderland. I go, is that Jason Kelsey? She goes, yeah, I like it. It's cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's not cool when you get destroyed at home by, by San Francisco and Barris. So, like... They're darlings and they're great, and I love the Christmas album, the podcast, and all that. Like, <laughs> the podcast and all you, that. Let's go play some. Are you trying? Are you implying that? I'm doing not implying anything. I'm straight up saying it. <laughs> the extracurriculars yes. are taking away from the way they're able to play the game, or are you just annoyed at the overexposure and they're also Ooh. losing? Yeah, I don't think Kelsey had two straight false starts because he recorded a Christmas album okay. against Buffalo. Wow. It's not about. I don't think it's about the football. It's just the image. Is, are they playing the Christmas music now? We can play this. <laughs> for charity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Sign was playing at the end of that Niners game, and I'm like, let's wrap it up, okay? I like the album. I'll donate to the charity. I really will. I, I would love it if they could beat Dallas by a couple scores here, right? Yeah, let's get this, my you know? And to your point, I, my I, lot is a I think for Philly, yeah, it's <laughs> really, amazing. Yeah. So is Jordan Davis. is awesome. Uh, I look at them right now, and this has to be a pissed-off Philly team that's going on the road to Dallas. And we're talking about how great it was, Howie Roseman goes out there and he gets Shaq Leonard. If I'm a linebacker on that team, I'm taking a little bit of offense to it. We just gave up over 140 yards rushing to San Francisco. The mm -hmm. talk of town has been our DBs couldn't tackle. That's been the talk since this game on mm -hmm. Sunday. We go out uh, it's been Shaq a talk for a while, but pro, from this, this guy. guy. Of two back surgeries. The Colts owe him money, and they still release him. And we're saying we're going to better our defense. 
defense by going out and getting them. Of course you welcome them. You're excited to have anybody that's going to help your team win. But at the same time, now everybody is questioning your defense. And for the Eagles right now, you still have the best record in the NFL. And now all we are doing here, we're sitting at a table and everybody's doing it. Questioning their toughness, their resiliency, No, everything. don't question the toughness. You're questioning whether whatever word, Jason whatever. Is. No, 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 yes, no. Are you whatever, whatever. You can plug in whatever word. You're questioning them. Doesn't matter the exact word you're using. So if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you're fired up to go on the road to this Cowboys team and say, you know what? We want to solidify and show everybody we are who we are. We lost to a really good 49ers team. And to you guys' point, if they lose this game, we're now looking at Dallas's first place in the division. Mm -hmm. And now we talk about the big four in the NFC. Now it's a race of four to get to that number one spot of who's going to win the games down the stretch. There you go. So this is, to me, the biggest week, obviously, for Philly season coming off mm -hmm. of that butt kicking that got right. from the 49ers. Right. If you are questioning a team's ability to beat another talented team, you are questioning all the adjectives that go with it, whether it be Plug toughness play, or resiliency or any of those things. Come on, come on, get over here. Get your butt over here. I'm going to take you Okay, on. all right, so there you go. The Eagles go from the penthouse to the outhouse in one week. It's a big week. It's a huge week. And I, for one, cannot wait to get this mother humper on. I appreciate you guys. We're going to have a lot of content, of course, this week because this is why we do all that work in the offseason. This is why you lift all them weights. This is why we cook all them chicken wings. This is why. If you can't get excited, Eagle fans, Cowboy fans, and the NFL for this weekend, then I don't know what to tell you. I think you need to find another sport. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Yet. Does this defense have any heart? Let's no, go. they suck. Person. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs>